Shell is a member of uh, a lot of associations, a lot of industry associations. And we're a member of several associations that have different views from us when it comes to climate change and the necessary responses. So it's, it's always a challenge for Shell in particular. I, I consider this, Shell pay my salary, I'm going to say this. I consider it as one of the most progressive oil companies when it comes to accepting the need for a response to climate change. We often find ourselves in these industry associations as the odd man out, but it's a task we have to take. So inside, if you were privileged enough to see some of the debates that take place inside these associations, you'd often find not just Shell, but Shell and a few others trying to combat that view. And the associations, important always to remember, they do a great job when it comes to things like technical standards, levels of safety, you know, precautions and other things. But there are always issues that any member finds itself at odds with. And increasingly, we shall find itself at odds with some of these associations. Bloomberg Business Week recently wrote what you just said, that on paper, Shell appears to be one of the most progressive oil giants on climate. You joined recently in calling for a 40% cut in Europe for greenhouse gas emissions. Your CEO, Ben Van Buren, has said we're not aligning ourselves with climate skeptics. Uh, and yet, so what are you doing to sort of differentiate yourself from other oil companies and, and say that climate is real, we need to do something about it? Yeah, so in addition to taking quite a strong assertive stance inside associations, we also, we are vocal outside. I mean, we do actively call for a strong price on carbon. We do actively call for the need for gas to replace coal in power generation. We need to see the start of affirmative action on climate change. Um, you will struggle now to find climate deniers inside the oil industry. It's just become unacceptable. Shell, I believe, was one of the first to come out and say, first of all, we recognise climate change. The next thing is we accept the fact the majority causes man-made, a large part of it down to fossil fuels. There has to be a solution. And what that implies is the need for an energy transition. So it's about the timing it takes to make an energy transition that's there for the long term. Again, I think long term is an important point here, Greg. We can't rush into something that has an immediate effect, but then has no legs commercially to stay in place. So it's making sure that some of the solutions that are chosen are durable and they make sense technically and commercially. 